Hello everyone, my name is Facundo and today we will talk about the Jamstack and how to get advantage of this new approach to create web projects. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Facundo Giuliani. I'm a developer relations engineer at Storyblock. I'm also a Git Kraken ambassador. I'm a Prism ambassador. Prisma is an ORM that we can use uh, for our projects to manage databases. I'm an Auth0 ambassador. Auth0 is a platform to add security to our projects. And I'm a Cloudinary Media Developer Expert. Cloudinary is a platform to handle image and video in our applications. The talk is not related to these last three products. If you want to talk about them, if you want to talk about uh, Git Kraken, Storyblock, or wherever, you can reach me on Twitter. My handle is uh, Facundo Zurdo, or you can uh, write me a message through my personal site, which is fgiuliani.com. So let's start with the definition. Let's talk about static web pages, which are pages that are delivered to the user's browser exactly as they are stored in the web servers. So uh, we talk about static web pages when we have HTML content, CSS file or CSS code and JavaScript code or JavaScript files. And we deliver the same files to it, every user that visits our website. So there's no change there. Probably they will have different experiences, but the code and the files will be always the same. They are delivered as they are stored in the web server to the browser. Different is the case of the dynamic web pages where some of the content is generated dynamically when needed. So for instance, we have a user that requests a page to our website. If we deliver HTML content, CSS content, and JavaScript code, to them, uh, exactly as they are stored in the web server, we are talking about static pages. In the case that we need to generate some dynamic content using template engines or databases or third-party APIs or other services to create the, the HTML content before delivering it to the users, we will be in the case of a dynamic web page. And this difference uh, is good to have in mind because we can identify some uh, benefits that the study web pages offer us. For instance, study web pages are fast because we are just delivering files as they are stored. We don't have to generate anything on the fly. They are cheap because uh, the web server uh, doesn't need any kind of um, behavior or any kind of advanced configuration to deliver static assets. They are easy to maintain because we are handling files that exist uh, as in any file system. They are more secure because uh, we don't have to execute any kind of code um, on the flight and we don't have to um, be careful or secure that code. I mean, there's a, a phrase that says, there's no code more secure than no code. If we are not executing any code, we don't have to worry about the security of it. It's easier to scale because uh, adding more storage to our web, se uh, web server will help us to uh, scale our application. And it's also stable because um, we are not executing any algorithm or process to generate the content while the users are visiting our web projects. We are delivering files. And having these benefits in mind, uh, some years ago, um, a new approach was created or thought, or I don't know, launch, let's say, which is the Jamstack. The formal definition of Jamstack is a new way of building websites and applications that deliver better performance, higher security, lower cost of scaling, and better developer experience. That would be like the formal definition, but it follows uh, some principles to create the web projects and to maintain them. Let's talk about those principles. Uh, we have the first idea, which is we should try to generate static assets at build time whenever is possible. I mean, we can uh, run a process or uh, compile our project or build our project and try to generate um, the, the more static assets that we can 
at build time. So we will have static assets and static files to have a static website living that will be visited by the users. These static assets, the idea is to deploy them to a CDN. A CDN is a content delivery network and it's a group of servers that are called nodes that are interconnected between them and then replicate the content um, in different uh, cities or geographic points, let's say. So as the content is replicated and, and the servers are improved to deliver static assets, the speed of browsing our websites will be uh, faster. Uh, because for instance, I live in Argentina and I deploy a website conformed by static assets to a CDN and the CDN has uh, nodes in, I don't know, uh, North America or Europe um, a, users, a user from Europe will visit my web project and will, uh, the request will travel to the, the um, let's say, the closer node of the network living in Europe and the request won't uh, travel to a server living in Argentina to visit uh, my website. So that will make the page load uh, speed faster. And also, if we need some dynamic content because we can need dynamic content uh, and not only offer static content. To generate that content, we should use a JavaScript to call APIs. Th those are the principles that we should follow um, to say that we are developing uh, uh, an application following the Jamstack approach. So here it is uh, probably clear. We will have a build system that will execute a content integration or content delivery process. And whenever the build is executed, we'll, we will be generated static assets that will be um, stored in a CDN. And those assets, uh, if we need some dynamic content, uh, we will use JavaScript to call APIs to generate that dynamic content. So we won't need any web server um, to, I don't know, to execute processes or to generate dynamic content on the fly. Um, to follow these um, principles or, and to create uh, web applications following the Jamstack, we have some tools available in the community and in the market, let's say. Those are the static site generators, the headless CMS, and the serverless platforms. Let's talk a little bit about them. And after that, we will see a demo of how we can get advantage of these tools to create static sites. First of all, we have the static site generator, which is a software that produces and deploys uh, a static website using data sources and templates. So these static site generators will grab data from different sources and templating uh, engines uh, using different programming languages. And uh, whenever we execute this static site generator, let's say at build time, if we have a project or a web application, we will generate static assets that will be um, our website. There are various static site generators depending on the programming language or, or the framework that you feel more comfortable with. Um, you, you, we have Hugo uh, static site generator to use the, uh, the programming language Go. We have Gatsby uh, if you want to use uh, React for instance. And another example that we can use as a, site, a static site generator is Next.js, which is a framework and a static site generator that we can use to um, create uh, files using JavaScript and React and uh, execute a process at build time to generate static assets that we can deliver to our servers. After that, we can talk about the content management systems, which are applications that are used to create and manage digital content. You may be familiar with this concept because there are uh, some uh, content management systems that were used for many years, like WordPress or Joomla or Drupal. But there's a new concept of content management system because uh, those applications have a, par um, let's say, a limit, which is that the developer has to use a certain framework and a certain programming language to create the presentation layer 
of the content that is generated using these applications. So for instance, we will have users that will use a, a, an admin panel to generate and create content. And if we want to display that content that is generated in these platforms, uh, we are forced to use, in the case of WordPress, for instance, we are forced to use PHP to create the web pages that uh, will conform our uh, website and use the content that was created. So um, let's say to not to be tied to a certain programming language or a, or a certain uh, framework, a new concept was uh, created or, or, or developed which is the headless CMS, which are content management systems where the content repository is separated or decoupled from the presentation layer. So with the headless CMSs, we will have uh, applications where the users or, or the content editors can generate content using an admin panel, and then the developers can use the programming language that they want to create the presentation layer for the applications, which is also cool because um, we can reuse the same content uh, generated in the admin panel uh, through different channels. I mean, we can create web projects, we can create mobile applications, we can create applications for smart devices like smart watches or I don't know, like uh, the Amazon Alexa device using the same content that was generated once through the admin panel of the headless CMS. Uh, I will focus today in, in my example using Storyblock, which is a headless CMS that offer us um, a real-time visual editor in case we are working on a web project and we will see how it works later. But we offer the content editors the possibility of seeing how the content will look like when it's deployed to production without having to do any kind of deploy or without having to uh, change any code. Uh, and, and that's a, a feature that it's super cool in case uh, our content uh, creation uh, department or team is separated from the development team. And the last tool that I mentioned uh, are the serverless uh, platforms, which are services to build, integrate, deploy, and host our applications. So we have this uh, different products available to do this. What they do are whenever we change the code of our application, let's say that we have our web application living in GitHub, in a Git repository. Whenever we change the code and we push the, the changes or we create a pull request with changes, these platforms will trigger uh, a build process or a, a static site generation process they will generate the static assets and the same service will grab the static assets that are generated and deploy them to a CDN that is maintained by the same team and the same um, server or, 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 or the same platform that we are using to integrate and to generate the static assets. And well, our website will be available in these CDNs uh, living there um, so the users can visit uh, our web page. In my example, I will use Bercel, which is a platform that we can use uh, to, to follow this goal. But there are others like Netlify, um, Azure Static Web Apps, uh, etc. And another tool that I will use in my example is Git Kraken to uh, commit the changes that we are doing to our web application um, so we can generate the static assets and deploy a new version of our website without having to execute any um, content integration process or anything. So let's go to the demo. Um, I will show you now. Here I have uh, a multi-language blog. Um, in this blog we can have, well, more than one language, I mean, it is translated. The blog is uh, deployed in Bercel, in the platform Bercel. If we go here, we, we see that we have different posts uh, that we can visit and we have different format for that. Uh, I, I used um, Tailwind CSS to, to get format to, to these pages. But as I said, this blog uh, 
is um, conformed by static assets. I mean, the, the images, but also the pages, uh, everything is a static file that is um, downloaded to, to the user's browser, delivered to the user's browser, sorry, and it's living in a CDN. So it will be faster than having to generate the dynamic content whenever a user visits our website, like we do, for instance, with a platform like uh, WordPress. This is the dashboard of Vercel, where I can see the status of my web page living. I have all the URLs that we can visit and etc. And we have different uh, details and configuration and customization that we can follow. And this is story block. Uh, this is the visual editor that I mentioned before. If you see here, um, I'm pointing to the production URL where my um, website is living and we have a visual editor that we can use to, I don't know, click here and edit the text on the fly. You will see that I can um, add some uh, text here and the visual, uh, the visual editor will display the changes in real time. Here I, I can uh, edit the title also, adding some stuff there, change the uh, blog post that we are di displaying here in the page. And this is done because well, we are pointing to the production URL, but I can also uh, um, see the, the, the possibility to, to see my local uh, environment here, point to my local computer to see what is living and it's not deployed on the site. This is a space that I generated inside Storyblock. I mean, I have a user and a space and I created all this content and all these different components that we can see, that you can see, sorry, uh, in the page. I mean, we have teaser, grid, fe uh, feature pods, etc. And I have the code of my application living here. It, it is, I, I mean, this is my local computer. And we, um, we are using here Next.js, which is based on the React framework for JavaScript. So you can see that for each one of the components that I have in Storyblock, I will have a visual representation of them uh, using React. So for instance, if I go to the website, you will see that here I have a teaser which has an image and has uh, a, tech, a headline. And if I go here to my application, I have a component for the teaser also using some uh, NPM packages uh, that are offer, um, that are uh, provided by Storyblock to create um, uh, like these components easily and to be able to edit them using the visual editor. And you can see here that I'm using the information that is brought using the Storyblock API. As I said, as, as it is uh, a headless CMS, Storyblock offers us an API that we can use from our projects um, to bring the information and not be tied to use any particular programming language or framework. Um, Next.js is, uh, uh, is a framework that offers us uh, server-side rendering to generate dynamic content, but also we can generate static assets. And this is the case of this blog post. If, uh, sorry, the, this uh, blog website. <laughs> if I go to uh, this file, you will see that I'm getting some static path with, would, which would be the, the URLs and the paths to the different uh, static pages that we uh, generate every time we run the build process. And we are getting all the links, all, all, the, all the URLs from Storyblock. And for each one of those URLs, we execute some code here in, static, in get static props to bring all the data for those URLs, bring uh, all the components, and render the pages with a certain layout and the uh, markup that we define for each one of the components, for each one of the uh, types of components that we define. So if you see here, I can edit this page live and see the changes uh, in real time, and that's not affecting our production instance of the, of the, web, uh, of the website. Um, we can do the same pointing to, to the local environment, but the information in the headless CMS will be only affected if we save here and we generate a draft version of the content, or if we publish and we uh, send the changes to 
uh, production. So let's say now that we can uh, add some content to, to this page. Um, I will point this to my local environment. Uh, I'm executing the, the same web project, but I want to show you that we will add now a component that is living in uh, our story block space. I mean, we define the, the component and the structure, but we don't have um, markup for it in our application. So we will add that markup and deploy that to uh, show you how the Jamstack works. Let's say, for instance, that I can add a new block, a teaser. We have teaser uh, here, uh, like the one that we have at the top. Uh, so we can say this is the new teaser and we won't add any image. We can reorder the blocks here if you see, which is pretty cool. And I will add another block, which will be the text. And we see now that the component text has not been created yet. That's what uh, we are displaying here. Uh, and that's um, code that it's been executing the web project. I mean, we can go here to the text and put the text that I want to display, but it is not being displayed because we don't have that in our web application yet. So we will go to the code of our application and here in the components, we will create a new file called text.js. And I will add some code that I have here separated um, that will be the markup of uh, our text component. So here we are creating a text component that we will link with story block uh, components. And then I will go to here to the um, dynamic component, uh, um, component that we are uh, importing from uh, story block SDK. And we will have a new import text from uh, text, sorry, slash text. And here we will add that if we have a text type component, we will use our text react component. So now if, we, if I go here, we refresh and we see that now we are displaying the text that I want to display. But again, this is not changing our production. This is not changing the content that we have saved in uh, the content management system. So if I want to do that, I have to click on save here and we are generating a draft version. And I will uh, also click on publish to publish the, the changes to production. So now if I go here to my production website, I will see that we are not displaying that. And that is because we didn't uh, deploy the, the changes uh, of uh, the, the component, I mean, to, to the project that is being host in Bercel CDN. So now let's go to Git Kraken. I will see that in my repository, I have two changes, the, the dynamic component uh, changes that applied and the new component that we create. And I will say, okay, add a text component. I will commit the changes and I will push the changes to um, our repository. This is a GitHub repository that I'm pushing the changes. But if I go to uh, the Git con control panel, you will see that here in Brazil, we have a building process that did being executed automatically because I, I added this commit add text component. I can go here and see the process and see the terminal and all the uh, tasks that are being executed and how the static pages are being generated. So you can see here all the static assets that are being generated at build time for the different languages that we have uh, for our blog, the different posts and etc. And after all those assets are generated, they are uh, uploaded, they are deployed, and um, well, we are setting the cache of our website. And after that, we will have the changes living in our web application uh, that we uh, can visit now. And if I refresh the page, you will see that now we have 
the new format, the new component that we added, and the content that was added in the uh, headless CMS. The headless CMS also offers a, a webhook feature that we can uh, call whenever we publish changes in the headless CMS. So we can configure that webhook to work with Bercel, and whenever we are changing content in the headless CMS, we can trigger this build process to generate the static assets with the new content that we are adding to our headless CMS. So that was the little demo that I wanted to show you. If you want to learn more about the Jamstack, you can go to jamstack.org, which is uh, the official website of the movement, let's say the Jamstack community. If you want to learn more about static site generator, you can go to Netlify uh, website and you can read more about that in this uh, blog post that I will share later. You can go to storyblock.com, uh, which is the official, the official site of Storyblock, and learn more about what's, what the headless CMS is in, in the third link that I'm sharing in this slide. Or if you go to the last uh, link that I'm sharing, uh, storyblock.com slash technologies, you will have a technology hub with different programming languages, frameworks, and tools um, that you can use to link to the headless CMS and get all the benefits of using a headless CMS and different SDKs that Storyblock offers to the developers. So thank you very much. And if you have any question or any doubt, please uh, contact me and see you later. Um, thank you so much for, for being able to join us here. Um, what a great talk. So many great comments out there. Um, this was a great introduction to uh, the Jamstack for so many people. I uh, saw um, one comment out there, uh, the brand new to Next.js. We'll talk about that here in a bit. Um, but again, thank you. Um, I think this is such a wonderful compliment to pretty much the entire event at this point uh, to see the world, the, the web that Matt Billman talked about yesterday in his keynote and see like the nuts and bolts implementation of what that really looks like. Um, so we have the first question there for you on the screen. Um, one of the challenges of working with static sites is allowing visitor interactions like forms, comments, et cetera. You got any tips for dealing with things like that? And that was Josie out on Discord who asked that. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I, I think that uh, there are a lot of services that we can consume from our static assets or static pages that we can use to to make this work easier, like there are already built-in forms that we can use, uh, comments, um, platforms that we can use uh, on our websites. Um, the, uh, probably one of the main concepts that I like most about the Jamstack is like reusing a product or a service that is already done instead of um, reinventing the wheel or trying to do a thing like from zero to recreate something that is already uh, created let's say, uh, or, or like do by ourselves something that we can consume or, or we can use a service, a tool, a framework, let's say, and, and use that time to, to create or to add value to our, to our products, to our services that are unique or, or, or add uh, unique features to our services and our products and offer a better experience for the, for the users, let's say. Right on, man. Um... Well, next up, um, I don't have it on a Chiron here on the screen, but uh, Josie again asked out from uh, from Discord. Um, so one of the challenges that she sees for um, for this kind of a project is that uh, costs just grow over time. They might start out small, um, but there always needs to be another company, another service, another API you hit involved, uh, increased costs, and then increasing number of compliance issues like GDPR and et cetera. Um, what would you say, by give advice for folks that are uh, struggling with that aspect of implementing the, the, this kind of, this kind of, um, di this kind of paradigm? Yes, yes. Um, well, I agree with the comment. I, I mean, it, it's true, or, or at least I, I see the same that when when the products get bigger and bigger or and you start to get in more demand or more users uh more concurrent users uh to your application or your product the 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 costs start to increase and and to like you have to evaluate the different 
platforms that are out, um, out there in the in the market to see uh, which price uh, fits the better for you for for your platform for your product and well probably one advice would be like try to like to evaluate the cost of paying those services or, or those third-party apis or, or platforms let's say and compare that to what cost would it incur to like creating your own service and maintain that with a with a development team let's say developers like focused on maintaining that platform um so like probably that that will be one one factor that you can evaluate when when created a, an application following the jamstack approach let's say right on that's some sage advice right there uh all right, next up we have from William Penton, our Nexus out there on Discord. Uh, I've been told that I would need either an API that is not static to be next to the static site or a third-party service. Is there any other way uh, to implement? Um, I, I believe this is in reference to the uh, question earlier about forms, comments, uh, and that sort of stuff. Is, is there a native way um, in the Jamstack paradigm or to, to do that? Hmm. It's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would say that the, depending on how you create your application or, or how you get it developed, uh, which kind of uh, third-party APIs or services would you need? Again, I mean, you can create your own services, your own applications, and maintain them if they are I don't know if you need a, a custom service or a custom application, uh, instead, or or you don't find any service that fits your your use case. Let's say, um, I mean, probably you don't need to use a third-party API, and you can create a platform to use in your application. But again, probably, or, or the the point that I understand from the Jamstack is trying not to invest a lot of time recreating something that is already uh, out there in the market, um, again, one of the examples is probably creating an authentication platform or a security flat platform. Uh, if you have uh, built-in platforms that the only thing that you need to do is to connect to their APIs and etc. cetera, um, probably it's not something that you need to do. Uh, it's something that you should evaluate at the moment of starting your application or migrating your application or adding some services or, or, or modules to your application. Right on, right on. Um, a follow up from that, I guess, uh, that's kind of one of the things that at least I've been fascinated about the evolution of Next.js. Uh, and you know, I know you mentioned that in your talk and there's been some talk out there in the Discord, um, but that has the ability to both be a static site generator and a server side rendering tool um, that, that can handle uh, these sort of things. Uh, at the Next.js conf last year, uh, I think it happened about a year ago in October. Um, there was a great talk about everything is a CMS and how you know Next.js can be an ingestion engine of that. Do, do you have any experience building that sort of like server side services within the same framework? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, I I consider myself probably a big fan of Next.js because you you have the the opportunity of creating a static site or a server side rendering. Uh, application depending on what you need uh, probably if you need to to create I don't know like an, an admin admin panel for instance or, or, or crowd pages to create information or content in a in a certain uh, database uh, you, you can do that using server-side rendering and, and and like doing that exactly with the same uh, framework that you are using to generate static assets so uh, that's one of the features that I like the most from Next.js probably yeah, uh, definitely something to dig into. Um, uh, that's actually a good segue into um, our next question. Uh, it starts out as a real comment, but I think the, there's a, a good solid question behind it. For a personal blog, what's holding uh, uh, DJ Otaku out there back is 15 years of WordPress and not wanting the headache of porting to something else. So if you were going to point people in the right direction of like, how do you get started with this? What's the best way to start? And then the follow-up question that actually evolves from there is like, how do you go from just starting a static site to evolving that and start building your own services with, with the tools available? That's, I know it's a big question and we can, uh, I'll, I'll restate it in the middle if you need to. 
No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. In fact, um, one of the uh, most used example that I see uh, when presenting the Jamstack or probably a static site generator or even a headless CMS is a blog or, or a blog site, let's say. And probably it's one of the, um, how to say, the examples that uh, reflects the most the, the possibility of creating static assets and visiting a static site but without without having the the like the example of the 90s in your head where you needed to create an HTML page and uh, manually writing the HTML code that you needed uh, for that static asset, because uh, a blog post is a, a static page that uh, whenever no matter which user visits the blog post, you will see always the same content and it's content that it doesn't depend on the user that is visiting your website. So, um, I, I mean, WordPress, one of the, I mean, WordPress is, is a great product for some use cases. Uh, that, that's why it's being used nowadays with probably 10 years old or, or, or 15 years old, like like um, Jotaku say, sorry if I didn't pronounce correctly the, the user, but um, the, the thing is that the, the, how to say that, the problem that uh, WordPress has is that you are rendering the page for every user that is visiting your blog post. If you are hosting that application or, or that blog site in a server and, and the, the server has, uh, uh, I don't know, a limit amount of availability or bandwidth or etc., you are consuming that bandwidth to generate the content for every user that is visiting your blog post when you don't really need that because uh, the content will be the same and you can have a static page already generated for all the users and, and use the same page for all the users that are visiting your website and you don't have to dynamically generate the content for every user that is visiting your your website. So uh, that, that's probably, uh, I, I think that it's one of the most used um, examples to, to explain uh, what are the benefits of the Jamstack, right? Um, about the headache of porting to something else, um, yeah, probably, I, I don't know, we can like evaluate some tools that you can use to import the information from your WordPress database to uh, a headless CMS or, or a different uh, database that you can use uh, and at build time, consume the information from the database and generate the static assets for your blog or, or the static pages for your blog, consuming the information from the same database that you used at that moment to create your blog posts. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. That's one of the common conversations I have out there with folks is, uh, and it came up yesterday in Discord. I don't remember which which conversation it came up on, but um, do you still need a database layer here or is that one of the apis you know jamstack came from javascript apis markdown um or i'm sorry markup <laughs> language um uh do you still need a database layer when you're dealing with these jamstack sites yeah i, I mean i wouldn't say that you need a database you can have because of probably you are porting information from somewhere else or you are storing the information in the way that you need a database, let's say, because I don't know, a headless CMS doesn't fit to your needs. Uh, there are very cool services out there that you can use um, as a database and, and that you can consume the information using an API. Uh, one of the platforms that I uh, used uh, when I begin to, to, to work with the Jamstack is PhonaDB. Uh, I really recommend the product because you can have like a no SQL database uh, there and consume the information using a data uh, an API that they uh, offer to you uh, for an ADB. It's very very cool. But besides that, I mean, you can use a, a product to or or I don't know a client to connect to your database at build time with the static site generators to generate the static assets using information coming from databases. Like for instance, one of the products that I really like is Prisma. Prisma is an ORM that you can use to um, map the information coming from the database and create like uh, an object mapping, uh, let's say, strategy. And that you can use that at build time with static site generators to create the status assets that will uh, be your website after that, right? Mm -hmm. 
thank, thank you very much for that insight. Um, I'm I'm just curious. Uh, don't again, don't have a Chiron for this or a, a caption for this. But um, how did how did you encounter Jamstack? Like, what, what's your origin story with going down this path? I mean, ten years ago, this wasn't a thing. Um, and uh, we we all like stumbled onto it. My first experience uh, w was actually the Smashing Magazine article about them leading WordPress, and it kind of shocked me. I was a WordPress nerd at that time. Um, still a nerd, but you know, now I'm a bigger sense of the word nerd. Um, but it really surprised me. Like, wow! And I started reading the benefits. Like, is this for real? I started playing around with their demo, and it was like, this is mind blowing. That's where I really first started digging into like what is possible here. So I, I would love to hear you know your story on that. Sure, sure. Uh, it's fun because, um, I mean, right now I'm working as a developer relations engineer, which is kind of uh, a different uh, position, let's say, that, that than, a, I don't know, a back-end developer or front-end developer or full-stack developer. But most of my uh, working experience with, uh, I mean, I, I'm working, I've been working uh, in the software uh, industry for 15 years or so, probably, and I, I've been uh, mostly working as a back-end developer. But when I was super young, let's say, I don't know, 15, uh, 15 years old or, or, or so, uh, my, first, uh, my first experience with, with web pages and website was um, a software that I think it doesn't exist anymore, which was called Microsoft Front Page, which you had the possibility to create web pages in the way that you um, uh, could create uh, Microsoft Word documents like moving images and placing them there and using buttons that redirect to other documents and etc and and like you were creating web pages right i i mean i i i moved from creating documents using uh, microsoft word to creating pages using microsoft front page and i felt at that time i i felt like i was superman right i mean i'm creating web pages right and and, and the truth is that the, the information or the content was static and and like those, uh, the Jamstack probably when, when I started to read about the Jamstack and these static site generators and using static assets, reminded me to that time of having um, static pages and, and, and display static content. Like the, the first web pages that I visited were 15 years ago, probably uh, when, when, when we used different type of connections to internet and internet was, was something very different to what we use nowadays or, or, or we we used to to visit different pages or, or, or different websites that nothing have to be with, with what we use nowadays right very much uh, I mean that GeoCities was my introduction to how websites work um, and American we, online right I mean yeah, at that exactly. time Dreamweaver <laughs> yeah. yeah um and it's it's interesting to see the paradigm like swing from you hand build everything to you swing over to we have a complete monolithic CMS that takes care of all of your needs like Drupal and WordPress and other uh, Magento um, the layer um, Joomla is the one I'm thinking of uh, and now we're yeah, Joomla very, yeah yeah and very much swung the other way and it's like no let's build static things again and let's just build them with like little pieces here and there and. I, I slowly see that pendulum starting to swing back. It's like, let's get all of our ducks in one box. Uh, I mix metaphors there, but um, it's just interesting to watch them in the technology swing. But um, that's uh, about all the time we have time, uh, all the time we have for questions. But uh, no, multiple people commented just wondering where you're at. Like, it's a beautiful background. It looks like you're in a very nice place, part of the world. So, where are you located? Yes, yeah, so, sorry. Sorry, because of that, I, I mean, I had an emergency and I had to, to run, but uh, this is, I'm, I'm in, in Argentina, I'm from Buenos Aires, but this is a different state, it's called Mendoza, which is uh, very close to Chile, and yeah, it's a beautiful place, and, and this is the place that I uh, can encounter to, to connect with a Wi-Fi connection and, and well, be here with, with you, so... <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's, it was a real pleasure to have you for Q&A. Thank you so much for your talk. I know uh, we exposed a lot of people today to some new ideas and some new technology, and that's what you know, DevRel is all about. I know that personally. So thank you so much, and thanks for being a Get Cracking Ambassador, by the way. Didn't even say thank you from that earlier. So Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, take care, and we will see you online.